Okay, let's go ahead and get started now with this particular video. And in this one, I'm going to explain what the formulas are to you. And uh, this one here, I know it's going to be a little confusing, but you just got to stick with me on this. You have to trust trust me on this. Go through this video, get a hold of what these formulas are, a little explanation of what it is. And then we're going to do scenario one. That's that long video where we're going to actually calculate uh, the formulas and going to put them into practice there. So I want you just to stay with me. Now, this PDF is attached to the video, so you should download it and you can follow along uh, with me. So the first formula, remember there's 12 of these formulas that I want you to know. Remember what EBM is? It's telling us how our project is progressing. You're going to see a lot of that as we actually... Uh, as we actually do them in the scenario one, scenario two, then you do scenarios three and four. Okay, so we have uh, the budget at completion. So that's the, the first calculation, and it's it's the original budget of the project. There is no formula for this. Now, on the exam, they may give you some things where you have to calculate the budget. They may say, well, you're building a building, and each story is a million dollars. You got 20 stories, so it's $20 million. I don't consider it a formula. And basic math, you should be able to calculate it. So remember, the BAC, just consider it the budget of the project. The plan value is the amount of money uh, worth of work we should have, uh, of worth of work that should have been done on the project. So PV represents, in terms of money, how much amount of money you worth of work you should have done so for example let's say your pv is a hundred dollars that means that you should have done a hundred dollars worth of work on your project whatever that means to you if your pv is two thousand then you should have done two thousand dollars worth of work so pv is calculated by taking the plan percent complete times the budget at completion so how do you find the plan percent complete well, let's say you got a 10 day project and you finish five days. Well, uh, right now is the end of the fifth day. Well, you should have done 50% worth of work. So you got to find a way to find the plan percent complete. Again, see, see the scenario video. I'll show you, I'll give you a quick tip on how to calculate that. The earned value is the big number. Now, let me give you guys a tip. Uh, earned value means a lot. And be, keep in mind, the thing is called earned value management. And uh, if you calculate this correctly, uh, then you're on good grounds because if it's calculated incorrectly from cost variance all the way to the two complete, you see, look, I'm going to highlight all these here. All of these will then become incorrect because if you notice, look, EV is in this formula, it's in this formula, it's in this formula, it's in this one. The EAC includes the top numbers. It's in this one. EAC again includes the top numbers. The VAC, the EAC includes the top numbers. This one here, notice it's here. Uh, so you got to keep in mind something. You calculate this one wrong, and almost every other formula will be wrong. So you want to calculate this one right. So what does it mean? It's the amount of money worth of work you actually did on the project. And that is equal to the actual percent complete times the BAC. So if someone comes to you and says, well, my earned value is $60. Well, that means you actually did $60 worth of work. There is a difference between plan value and, and uh, EV, PV and EV. So PV is I should have done $40 worth of work, but then I did $60 worth of work. So my PV was 40, my EV was 60. That's good, I did $20 more worth of work. How much money did you spend doing the work? Well, that's the amount of money you've already spent on the project. AC, there's no formula for this. Just the money you spent on the project so far. Uh, cost variance. This is the difference between the work done and the money spent. This value should be positive for under the budget. Negative value indicates over budget. So cost variance is equal to EV minus AC. So it looks at how much money worth of work you've actually done versus, and versus how much money you spent. You subtract the two numbers and you get a number. Remember now, a positive number is good. It means that you are... <clears throat> Means you're under your budget. If negative value means you're over your budget, bad. Remember, CV, positive, good, negative, bad. CPI, this is the rate of how we are spending to actually how we're earning on the project. So in this one, it's EV divided by AC. Now, because it's a division, it's going to give you some kind of decimal. Well, anything with one and over is good. If you hit the number at one, this is your on budget. One and anything one and over, you're 
under the budget by that much if you are under one that means you are over budget so keep that in mind so quick tip one and over good on the one bad remember that schedule variance the difference between the amount of work we should have done versus the amount of work actually done this is looking at the schedule this number should be positive for ahead of schedule and negative values indicate behind schedule so in this one it's ev minus pv is the schedule variance so you look at listen again now you look at the amount of work you actually did minus the amount of work you should have done well if the amount of work you actually did is bigger than the amount of work you, you should have done well that means you're good you're ahead of your schedule that gives you a positive number the number is at zero you're on schedule if the number is negative it specifies that you are behind schedule by that much money worth of work schedule performance index it's the rate of how we are meeting the project schedule because this is going to be a, a, a percentage this value should be one and one and over for a project to be ahead of schedule so it's equal to sv divided I'm sorry, uh, sspi is equal to ev divided by pv so it's ev the amount of uh amount of money worth of work you did divided by the how much work you should have done so this is going to give you a percentage now if this percentage is if this number is at one you're on schedule if this number is on the one you're behind schedule if number is over one you're ahead of schedule example if somebody comes to you at 1.2 you're 20 percent ahead of schedule if somebody comes to you at 0.8 you are 20% behind schedule. And again, you're gonna see more of this when I start doing those scenarios with you. Let's move down here to the last four. And you have EAC, estimate at completion. This is a forecast in the total cost of the project at the end based on the current spending rate. So EAC, remember for your exam, is the forecast. Anytime the exam asks for a forecast, you calculate EAC or you know that's the EAC form. It's equal to the BAC, the budget, divided by how you're spending your money. See, the CPI is the rate of how you're spending. So how you predict how much money you're going to have at the end of the month. Forget about this. You take your salary divided by how you're spending your money. That's going to tell you how much you have left. So it's the same concept here. So you take the BAC divided by the CPI. This is going to give you a number. That number represents how much money you're going to finish the project at at the end of the month. So if your CPI is, let's say your budget was 100 and then your CPI is 95. Well, that's good. You're going to finish the project at I'm sorry, uh, e, your EAC is at 95. That means you're going to finish the project $5 under the budget because you started you starting at 100 and now you're predicting to finish at 95. If you Another example, if your project is a uh, budget at 1,000 and your EAC calculations is giving you 1,100. Well, that's not good. That means you need $100 to finish your project. It means you're going to be over your budget by 100 bucks. Estimate to complete ETC is the forecast and the amount that will be needed to complete the current project based on the current performance. This is equal to EAC, the new forecasted budget, minus the AC, how much you've already spent. So the boss comes to you, how much more money do you need to finish your project? And you say, well, based on my current forecast, uh, I need, uh, the, well, the current forecast is telling me it's going to cost $1,000 to do the project and I've spent 900 so I need another $100. That would be your ETC. Your VAC is the variance at completion. The difference between the original budget and the new forecasted budget, this value should be positive for project that may end at or under the budget. So this is equal to the BAC minus EAC. But what does that mean? So the VAC is a number you really want to look at because that tells me when you're finished your project, how much money are you going to have left over for a project that's under the budget? Or how much money, you, how much more money you need to finish the project? How much more money you're going to be over the budget by? We should say. So, for example, let's say somebody comes to you and says their VAC is a thousand bucks positive. That's great. That means when they finish the project, they have an extra thousand dollars left over. Somebody comes to you and says it's going to be negative a thousand. You're like, oh boy, because now you need to give them a thousand dollars to finish their project on top of what you gave them on the budget. Okay, and the next one is two complete performance index. And what that is, is <clears throat> it's the performance that needs to be met to finish the project within budget. Now this one outputs a 
percentage. And it's a pretty complex formula, right? It's BAC minus EV divided by BAC minus AC. And the way you're going to calculate this is you're going to take your BAC, you're going to minus it from your EV, and you divide all of that by taking your BAC minus it from your AC. Now, you got to keep in mind what this formula is. It's basically a percentage of how hard you have to work to meet the budget, to finish the project within the budget. So, for example, somebody comes to you and says that their project is currently, uh, TCPI is calculated currently at 0.8. Well, that's good. They only need to work 80% as hard in order to complete the project on budget. But if they come to you and says 1.2, then you're like, ooh, well, they got to work 20% harder to finish the project on budget. You see, when the number is at 1, it means that they, they have to continue working at that same pace, that 100% pace that they're working at to finish the project on budget. So generally, if this number is under 1, uh, it's not good. It was over one is generally a good thing. All right, that concludes these formulas. Let's go ahead now and get into and start using them.